Hi, uh, this is the ninth part of my Cisco Genji tutorial. Last time we learned about macros and templates. Today we learn about Cisco Genji filters. At the end of the session, we will see a more complex filter and the template function. Filters are expressions to select, or in other words, filter log messages. They make sure that the right message, uh, messages reach the right destinations. For example, you can use filters to discard debug level log messages or make sure that all authentication related messages are routed to your SIEM system. A filter uh, definition is a collection of one or more uh, filter functions. It consists of two parts. It starts with the word filter followed by an identifier for uh, the filter uh, which uh, you will use later to refer to the given filter. After that, it lists the filter functions with their parameters. You can combine multiple filter functions use, using Boolean operators. Uh, here are how the syntax looks like. You can select a filter you can select or filter log messages using filter functions. Some of the more common filter functions are the level filter, which filters for severity, or in other words, uh, the importance of the log message. The facility filter uh, filters for uh, the facility, in other words, uh, the main category of the log message. The host filter filters based on the host names. The program filter filters based on the application name. The match filter filters uh, the uh, message content using regular expressions. The netmask filter filters by sender IP or subnet. The filter uh, filter uses a different filter. This configuration will look uh, similar. Uh, it collects local log messages and filters uh, them similarly to how the var log messages file is often created. Uh, you should check. You, you should take a closer look at the uh, filter line. There are two filter functions. The first one discards debug level log messages. The second one uh, selects mail related log messages. The two functions are connected with and not, which means that both debug level and mail related messages are filtered out. Debug level messages are usually discarded unless uh, really needed in a debug session. Mail related messages are usually saved to a separate log file. The inlist filter filters log messages based on white or black uh, blacklisting. It compares the content of a single field with a list of values. These values are read from text files. There is one value uh, in each line. There are several use cases for the inlist filter. The original idea came uh, at an uh, info security conference. The inlist filter can be a poor man's SIEM system. Uh, you can download various IP address databases, which uh, list spammers, malware command and control uh, hosts, or similar databases. Using the lists, SyslogNG can alert in real time when there is a match. Another possibility is filtering based on a list of application names. Using if or and else statements, you can make conditional expressions in a log path. It makes using the results of filtering a lot easier. Instead of creating complex configurations using multiple log paths, uh, you can use a simple syntax. You can use if statements to use uh, different parts, uh, different parsers on different logs. Another use is sending matching logs to a given destination and implementing real-time alerting using SyslogNG. In the following example configuration, we will see not just the if statement in action, but two more new configuration elements, template functions and an inline destination and a configuration element we already mentioned, but we cannot see on the screen, application adapters. The first five lines of the configuration are the same ones we have already seen a couple of times before. A version number declaration, including the SyslogNG configuration library, a source uh, for local and internal log messages, 
file destination and the log path that connects the source uh, to the destination. When it comes to a more complex log statement, I prefer to follow configuration by reading the log statement. So let's jump to the end of the configuration and check the log statement. It starts with the with a source and uses the very same source definition that we used in the first log statement. Uh, however, in this case, uh, it is followed by a filter. It selects any log messages from the sudo application using the program filter. The next three lines are conditional expression with an if statement. Uh, it uses the match filter and checks if the content of the .sudo.subject name value pair equals vo workshop. Uh, where does this name value pair uh, come from? As mentioned earlier, when you use the SysLogNG configuration library and the system source in your configuration, your log messages are parsed automatically by a number of parsers called application adapters. One of those is the sudo log parser. This name value pair contains the name of the user running the commands through sudo. The second line of the if statement looks uh, familiar, but still there is something strange. Instead of referring to a destination, the destination itself is declared there in line. Anything you declare uh, this way cannot be used anywhere else in the configuration. In this configuration, any log message matching the filter in the uh, if statement is saved to this file destination. The last line of the log statement refers to the file destination in the way uh, that we learned earlier by its name. But when you take a closer look at, at the destination, you will see something new, a template directly at the file destination, so it cannot be used elsewhere, and the template function. It writes log messages in JSON format. Why is it necessary? The default file template only saves the syslog header and the log messages, which means that name value pairs created from the log message are silently discarded. Template functions allow creating log messages from name value pairs. The format JSON template function allows you to create JSON formatted log messages. Using the dash dash scope, you can select which group of name value pairs to include. These lines usually span uh, many lines on screen, so the double line feed at the end makes the file easier to read for humans. As sudo is installed on almost all uh, Linux hosts, you can easily test this configuration just by rewriting the username in the if statement to something available on your system. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment on YouTube or reach out to me on Twitter or Mastodon.